Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how I've made one of the assets for this composition for the game Noara. Let's get started. I'll be covering how to make uh, one of the trees that you can see on the first images. So I start with an already made tree that I've made before so that I have uh, proportions okay and I'm using a reference from our concept artists. Now I'm just roughly shaping uh, the profile of the tree using Z-Sphere. I've completely switched my workflow from using only Blender to using ZBrush, uh, Blender and Substance Painter and eventually Substance Designer. Once I'm done with profiling, I will create an adaptive skin and import it as a new subtool. Then I will use the clay build-up brush to create the main wrinkles of the tree and try to compose the main shape. I've also masked an area that will be a part of the tree where the bark has been removed or has been broken. So here I'm trying to create the primary shapes, the one that will be read from afar. I encourage you to watch the Gleb Alexandrov video about the three level of details where you have your silhouette, then the first level, the second and the third. And you have to distribute them as well as possible. So I'm using Dynamesh here with a pretty low level of detail. It's like uh, the dynamic topology in Blender. So you can absolutely I do this kind of thing in Blender using the skin modifier to create your base tree and then sculpt it with a dynamic topology. Once I'm done with this step of sculpting, I will slightly increase the resolution of the mesh and I will smooth everything so that I get uh, this nice and smooth uh, tree bark. I can start, I can then start giving style to the tree bark. I'm using the Orb Flatten Edge brush. Michael Vincent, known as Orb, is one of my uh, favorite artists ever. Uh, with Fanny Verne, they are both working for Blizzard and we are aiming for a Blizzard style of uh, visual. So using this tool is a very first step to get to this level and I hope I will get to his level one day. So I'm flattening uh, the bark so that I get nice and, and crisp uh, result. Then I will smooth the creases so that I have a very polished sculpt. Since my whole painting will depend like 99% on the baked maps, having a, a polished sculpt is pretty important because I won't do that much in painting. Uh, everything will be done in Substance Painter and I will just put some highlights and some color variation using painting but the wall color and base will be done using the base geometry, let's say. Talking about our free level of details, this can be uh, identified as the second level of detail where we start to see and um, make better shapes on the wall surface. After a while I can start adding my tertiary level of details. So there is two steps here. I'm somehow highlighting the different area by uh, increasing the creases between the big chunks of bark and I'm also adding some scars here and there onto the surface that will act as the tertiary level of detail. So those are fine details that won't be uh, viewable from afar, but as soon as you will get a little closer to uh, the tree, you will see them. And I'm trying to put them only on the different points of interest, like um, 
a changing of angle on the tree surface or a changing of direction for the branches. I will finally work on the naked bark area. So I'm using the orb cracks brush, which is very handy. And uh, I'm making some hold with the embers that is showing because we have special trees in the lore that have uh, luminescent amber. So I try to make some bigger cracks so that I can add those later on. These allow us to put some dots of light onto dark surfaces and playing with light in game engine is very important because it allows you to bring more details. These effects can be then baked into the light map in Unity. I'm then decimating the model so that it has a polygon that Blender can handle easily and I will export them. Unfortunately, I was recording the wrong screen while making the retopology, but it's uh, pretty basic here. So I've made my retopology. Uh, here is the eye poly model, and I've also made a cage. So this is something I've already explained on the piranha model. So you can uh, jump to it if you want to have explanation on what the cage uh, will do but it will basically allow us to bake the maps as good as possible. And you will see that using this cage in one shot, I will have very nice normal map and very nice um, word space normal map. First, I need to unwrap my model. So I will place my seams trying to hide them in the different creases and I will separate the different uh, parts of the trunk because you can't really um, unwrap them at once. And once I'm done with marking my seams, uh, I will unwrap this and try to fit it into a square or into a rectangle shape so that when I will have like five trees made to populate the map, I will be able to reorganize their UVs onto a common UV map and bake all their different map into a single one. This allow you to use a single material for for all your uh, trees onto the map in engine and reduce the number of draw calls and so increase the performances. So here you can see that you need to make a smooth shading for everything so that it bakes properly and you can see that I have a nice normal map uh, there is just a buggy part but it's uh, under the tree and I really don't care about it because we won't be seeing this. So I can save this map then bake the normal map with the object coordinates. This will allow me to give an orientation to my lightning and give uh, color variation and I will then bake the AO. I'm then using the blend file Curvature Generator by Daniel Bekusha that allow you to generate Curvature's map based on your normal map and it's very handy and offers very nice Curvature map with different level of Curvature. It's way more efficient than using the pointiness uh, node. I will then load all my texture inside Substance Painter and I will load smart material I have created based on the previous tree so I just need to update the different textures and clean a bit uh, the different layers and as you can see I have three different layers of color that are filtered using the normal map with object coordinates so it allows me to give some color variation based on the previously baked geometry. I'm using uh, the curvature both to influence the diffuse color, but here also to influence the specularity of my model so that the edges will be highlighted when they are exposed to direct lightning. This will bring the hand painting and stylized uh, feature we are looking for, but we are also using 
uh, PBR material. So this is a bit of a mix-up, let's say a stylized PBR material here. Then I will paint a large color variation using a soft brush, bringing some light to some point and darkening some areas. So I have two level of lightning and one of darkening. And the final pass will be the eye lightning of the tertiary detail we have been uh, speaking of previously. So I'm just uh, adding some highlights on the very uh, edgy part of the tree and uh, we may see it or not but I often zoom out of my model so that it's very small into the screen and could be uh, seen as how it will be inside the game so that I'm making sure that what I'm painting will render properly into the game and will be seen properly into the game. If it doesn't or if it makes your model look messy like there is too much detail everywhere just don't do it. Um, this is why zooming out is very important and I'm not like highlighting every edges. I'm just highlighting what uh, we have been uh, working on as the tertiary details. I will then paint into a new mask the new color for the inside bark. And then I have also another uh, folder including uh, the emission shader for the amber part. So this is kind of the same process, I will, I will bring some uh, secondary colors to it with a large brush and then I will just paint some highlights and paint the amber. Once done I can export my different textures, so I'm using a, a specular process which is supported by Unity. And then I will load those different textures inside of Blender and I will also load my low poly model. So I'm using Blender 2.8 because it allowed me to fake somehow using EV um, the Unity render engine because it's pretty close and it's used the same terminology, the same semantic for the different kind of shaders. So I'm importing uh, my mesh into uh, a bank, let's say, and I will then duplicate it. I'm pasting a group of nodes I've already created so that I just need to load the different textures and this will work for any kind of model I'm importing. So here you can see uh, the tree we have created shaded in EV. I will duplicate it and move it to my scene. And then I will duplicate some branches and canopy that I have created uh, and populate this tree so that it looks like an actual tree. So this is exactly the same kind of process you will use in Unity. You will, from those separate elements, create different variations of the tree and make them a prefab that you will be able to scatter onto your map. And uh, this is a good method because it allows you to work faster and uh, it allows you to use uh, the same model, the same shaders, etc. and reduce um, the memory usage and all this kind of stuff. So the canopy are curved shapes uh, with, um, with an alpha clip style of material and I've created those leaves in Photoshop and by layering them and using the ambient occlusion you will get a nice result. So I don't need to make them connecting or uh, uh, have a perfectly realistic way to layer them. Uh, the important thing is from the top view, from the view uh, in the game, you get a nice result. So I have one big uh, canopy file that is uh, full of holes and I'm filling those holes with uh, smaller canopy uh, shapes and it brings some uh, noise 
let's say, a noisy pattern to the canopy, making it like more natural. So I'm making another instance of the tree, making some variation uh, in the orientation of the canopy, and I will be able to distribute it onto my map. Once I'm done, I can press Ctrl J and it will uh, join the different shape in a single object like it will be in uh, Unity when you create a prefab. And from my camera angle, I will just position those newly created trees just to check that they work well inside the environment and make uh, a render test. So the idea is that I have a grid that represents the map inside Unity uh, with all the different stuff we have to make. For the time being, we don't have the concepts for all the, the area of the map and we have to test the map uh, in-game to make sure that the game design is okay. But uh, I can make uh, a beauty corner render, which is uh, just to check the mood of the map and the mood and the, the style you are uh, aiming for. So this is it. You can see the full time-lapse video by clicking the link on the screen. And if you want me to create more video about making environment for game, just let me know in the comment and put a like. That's really appreciated. Thanks for watching. See you later.